Hey, everybody. Welcome to Pink Shade. This is a bonus episode, you guys. I'm very excited because I have a fun guest today. You, you guys know I like to just interview people that I like, things that I'm interested in that aren't necessarily related to uh, my day job, which is reality TV. So you guys all know Chip Layton from his hilarious Instagram TikTok called The Layton Show. He gathers ridiculous things that teenagers say that they text to their parents. Like in my house, it's always, bruh, bruh, everything's bruh. Yeah. And he screen grabs them and posts them. And he does really funny ones with his wife as well. These are just the things that my friends send back and forth to each other all day long. Or I send to my husband who doesn't even have Instagram. This account is like the one that we always send. It's so funny whether you have teenagers or not, or you around any middle schoolers in your life. It's just so funny. So Chip, I'm so happy to meet you because I think we live parallel lives. Well, thanks. Yeah, it's great to be here. I appreciate the kind words and yeah, looking forward to it. Um, I bet you hear that a lot though. Like I told you before we started, I was like, I think you're pretty, you're pretty hip with the 50 plus, you know, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I do get a lot of uh, comments around, oh, we share this with our text group or whatever, that kind of thing. It is you know, like very shareable, even within families or whatever. But um, yeah, people kind of know, but they like people out there probably don't know my name, but like, they'll be like, oh, that's that uh, guy with the text messages or whatever. And, you know, people will sort of recognize my face kind of thing. Yeah. Yes. And when I told people I was talking to you, they're like, I don't know who that is. I go, it's the Layton show. And they're like, I don't know. I go, the funny text from teens. And like, oh, I love that guy. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes. And it is Layton, right? Not Leeton. Yeah. No, you got it right. I'm just making sure I'm saying it right. Um, I did find out recently. So I have a friend, uh, Deanna, who has a podcast called How to Be Less Old. <laughs> and she died that she and her um, podcast partner, they dissect the words and the phrases that the teens use and what they mean. Mm. And she brought me to a phrase recently, which is called pebbling, which is what, you know, the penguins do. They bring each other little pebbles and that shows their love oh. in our, uh, in this day and age, pebbling means when you constantly send people like Instagrams or memes that you think that they will like. Oh yeah. Yeah. I haven't heard. That's a good, that's a good phrase. I got to uh, keep that in mind. I, uh, I, yeah. The, the challenge if you send your kids like, uh, you know, funny TikToks or Instagrams is like, they won't want to open them because they'll, they'll, they're worried it's going to mess up their algorithm and they're going to start getting like served old people videos. So it's usually doesn't go that well, but I did not know that. That's why my kids <laughs> don't open my TikToks. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. The typical response is like, uh, either they'll respond before, you know, it would have taken them the time to actually watch the video and they're, you know, they're pretending they saw it or they'll just delete it immediately or uh or or ignore it but uh you know it doesn't hurt to keep trying i guess, I guess. that is so funny i didn't realize that's why they didn't open it i just thought they were just like so busy you know <laughs> could be that too uh yeah too cool um but but if i don't open theirs it'll be like bro you didn't open my thing did you watch it Right. Yeah. No, I I have a thing. I do the series on like things I've apologized to my teenagers for. One of them's like, you know, I didn't respond to a text within 15 seconds, but uh, which is ironic because, you know, it usually takes about 15 business days for me to get a reply, but you know, whatever. <laughs> Absolutely. I, you posted something recently that your daughter pointed out that no one had replied in your family group text except for you replying to yourself. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was, this was like, I think it was last summer, but it was like, it was like the beginning of August. And, uh, I, she pointed out like the entire month of July, like the only messages in our family group chat were mine, you know, and nobody had responded to any of them, except there was one exception where she put the thumbs down on a message I sent. Cause it was about like what time we had to leave in the morning. So, right. you know, mm -hmm. like I hear from a lot of other people that are like, yeah, there's, there's usually another group chat that the dad's not in that people are actually communicating. And I don't know if that's true in my house, <laughs> but we have, um, so my son is away at college and my daughter went to college and it was a little bit of a failure to launch. So she came back and now she's working and she's doing great. But so we have a, um, a group text since my son's at college, he doesn't need to be in the family group text about who took the dogs out and all yeah. that. So we just have one now and it's, uh, I named it, you know, mom, dad, Anna, and, uh, she renamed it slum lords and tenant. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Class. <laughs> I was like, Result, um, yeah. <laughs> let's call you're living in our house for free, but you have a job. What are we talking about here? Right, what are we talking yeah. <laughs> yeah. She wouldn't let us every time we would rename it like something normal so that we could find it easily, you know, but no, they have to name it. Her yeah. name on her phone for her dad is the one who pays. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, the uh, I hear a lot about like group chats being renamed. The other the other thing is like kids will just take themselves out of the, the family group chat like <laughs> repeatedly. It's like <laughs> they get, you just got to keep adding them back in. So I don't know. That's not the perfect uh, communication mechanism, I guess. We have um, an Apple calendar. And so I have all the labels, mm -hmm. right? This one's for the daughter. This one's for the son. This one's family. This one's for the dogs. You know, then I have one just for the podcast that I shared with my producer. So I have all these little calendars color coded perfectly. And my daughter said the other day, you know, I'm not on the family calendar. I said, you are. I invited you in 2019. You <laughs> are on it. She goes, huh? Never looked at it. I said, so all this time when we tell you like when our flights are or when we're going and, that, and she goes, no, I don't know. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. That oh. invitation is still pending. Probably. <laughs> it's still pending. She goes, can you send it again? Cause I think I lost it. So let me, let me find out about you. So hmm. where do you live? You appear to live in a very beautiful area. <laughs> I do. We live in uh, the Portland, Maine area, which is uh, yeah. Great. We've been here for, I'm not, I'm from uh, Pennsylvania near Philadelphia originally, but uh, okay. I've been in Maine for over 15 years this time around. So it looks beautiful. I'm always like, hmm. he's near an ocean. He's in a forest. It looks nice. Yeah, no, it is beautiful. I mean, not quite as beautiful in February, but uh, this, this time of year, it's good to get a lot of footage. There's leaves on the trees, but uh, yeah, no, I, I love living in Maine. It's like we're you know near the beach, and there's you know forests and lakes, and uh, yeah, I'm very lucky to live where I do. It's nice. Well, can you tell me about your kids? How many? Without you know revealing their information, they'll get mad about. Just tell me about your kids and their ages and all that. Yeah, sure. So, you know, so I've been I'm married, been married for 25 years now. We have two kids. Um, uh, my son's 20 and my daughter's 16. So uh, one in college, one in high school, uh, both great kids, you know, um, kind of, uh, yeah, both have great sense of humor, which you, you probably see coming through in some of the text messages that I've, I've shared in the past. But, uh, uh, but yeah, they, they uh, yeah, they're both great and they keep us busy and uh, it's fun. Okay. Well, that's why I feel like we're living parallel lives because mine are 21 and 19 and, yeah. you know, the age of, like I said, supposed to be emptiness, but one came back. Um, yeah, yeah. So your, your son is in college? Yes. Okay. And will you say where he goes or give me a region? I don't think anybody's going yeah, to he's, he's down. down in, yeah. He's in Virginia. So um, a little ways away from us, but uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I live in Virginia. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And I have to say, and I can cut this out if you don't want me to say it, but I did notice some of your pictures looked like William and Mary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a William and Mary. I think I could say that. Yep, yeah. Some of the, yeah, there, there's some recognizable landmarks that I use in the background sometimes. So, yeah. That's funny. A friend of mine um, whose son went to William and Mary, um, no, no, sorry, her husband went to William and Mary. He played football there. And she sent me a thing. She said, I think this guy's kids go to William and Mary because he's showing all these pictures. I go, he could have just taken pictures on a college door. And right, she goes, right. no, I think he went. I think they go there. Yeah. Yeah. There was one, one day his uh, freshman year when he's like, he texted me, he's like, uh, they found out about your TikTok down here. <laughs> I did like a really big college post that had a lot of uh, images from William and Mary. He's like, yes, a couple of random girls uh, came up to me and asked if you were my dad. So I don't, I don't know if well, that's a good or bad thing, but uh, I think it's good. I think it's yeah. good. Yeah. That is so, that is so funny. You're like, yeah, who's not so cool now? Look at me. <laughs> right, right. Look at me. So when did you, when did you start this account? Like, give me like the whole reason, mm. the impetus, how it started, because it's such a funny idea. Yeah. I mean, it started, uh, you know, my daughter and I started using TikTok like during the pandemic, like late mm. 2020, early 21. And um, I've, I always thought like that was a a really cool platform because you know somebody with no following um can reach you know thousands or even millions of people based on just if their content's engaging or not so it's like yeah. there's never been anything like that and you know in the history of the world i don't think and so i was like oh maybe i could you know i'm kind of funny maybe i could create something that would you know be seen by like five thousand people or something and uh so i started posting stuff and uh that's the early stuff i did was like terrible i mean i like for six months i didn't post anything that was like any good i was actually thinking about deleting my account i had like seven but was it the, was it the, what was it the same kind of was, content or no No, it was different i i, I try to think of a good example but it was it was more i was going for more for like quirky funny and like weird instead of like relatable so it was you know it was very different it wasn't like text messages or uh marriage stuff or whatever it was just like you know i do different trends or it's yeah it's kind of tough to describe but anyway it wasn't going well then like like I was thinking about deleting the account and then I posted something about marriage. It was like, you know, basically like scenes from marriage, just like funny little images, like a you know, empty gas tank in the car, or, you know, just Amazon <laughs> packages on the doorstep or whatever. And, yeah, uh, yeah, all that. I, I, yeah, I posted it at night. We were on vacation in like this rental house and 
posted at night and I kind of forgot about it. And then I was out like kayaking the next morning. My, my daughter like texts me. She's like, your post is going viral. Oh my God. It's like, it's got like 50,000 views and you know, so many comments. And I was like, I had like a fishing rod out of the boat. I'm like trying to get my phone and see what's going on. And it was like, that went to like, you know, 2 million views or something. And then, um, oh my God. and then a couple weeks later, um, I did the, the, my first text message post and that went viral. And then like, it, it kept happening like every couple of weeks or so I would. And, and so I started to grow, you know, from 17 people to like, you know, gained a couple hundred, a couple hundred followers with that first one. And then, you know, maybe a thousand with the next and it just, you know, just kind of gradually, um, you know, gained a following. I did, I think it was that fall. I did, I started the series on things I've apologized to my wife for. And that was like yes. a really, really big one. I gained a lot of followers from that. So yeah, I mean, it was all, I didn't like have a <laughs> a plan to do this from the beginning, but, uh, but I always thought like after those first couple, when, you know, that when people were connecting with it, that there was something here that, that could go somewhere. Yeah, totally. Things I've apologized to my wife for is, I was just out of town and just got back. And I told my husband when I got back, I said, I had a dream about you that you were with this girl and then you told me just to get over right. it and that it was fine. Right. And I was, right. what was wrong with me? Because I was the stupid one. He goes, <laughs> okay. And I go, so I was really mad. He just looked at me like, well, right. I, I didn't do that in real reality, life. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He apologizes that a lot for dreams that I have. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's one I did was I was mean to her in her dream. And, you know, I, I hear from a lot of people like, oh, I cheated on her in her dream or whatever, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's stuff like that. Like, um, I'm trying to think of another example. Like I, I ruined our couch by sitting on it, you know, that kind of thing. You got to flip the <laughs> cushions. Yeah. If you cushions. always, you yeah, if you always sit in the same spot, it's going to indent the cushion. So, uh, you know, now if I want to watch TV, I just like to stand. So it's, you, you just know, have it's to hover in the air. <laughs> right. right yeah. You also posted that you had to apologize for not, um, announcing that you were going to bed so you said yeah. you were work, working on a von trop family number to yeah exactly you got to uh you got <laughs> in my house anyway i've heard this from other people too you got to announce when you're headed upstairs for the night so yeah that's whole so long farewell i'm doing yeah one man version <laughs> of that it's gonna it's gonna help a lot i think <laughs> i'd like to see that on your, <laughs> right, on your yeah. tiktok yeah. and so when you started out and you were just doing you were just doing tiktok but then were you always like whatever you did on tiktok you would just put it on reels or, or, well, Instagram, or did Instagram not have reels at that time? Uh, uh, I don't, I think at the very beginning they didn't have reels actually. And um, it was, yeah, it was large. It was like completely a TikTok account for, I don't know, some period of time, six months or maybe it was a year or whatever. And, um, and I, I grew up big following and then TikTok took a while. And then uh, Instagram took a while to take off actually. Um, but once like um, I think that, that apologies to my wife series started and I got a bunch of, um, like random like press coverage around that like the um mm -hmm. there was an article written about me in a um in, in like a british tabloid and then like it got picked up by all these different um places in the u.s and i was people were saying they were hearing me on the radio and stuff like that and so that really grew the instagram account and and um it was just this year so over, like over three years that the instagram account now has more followers than tiktok and it's yeah. definitely got most of my engagement there and it's it's a more flexible platform in terms of you know doing different things on it so and i have a facebook account that's got you know close to two hundred thousand followers on it too but you know what's interesting about that i think for 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 me for the for the elder for the um gen x that because I'm already on Instagram and the reels are there, it just makes it so much easier. Mm. Also, I find if I go over to TikTok, I mean, I'll just be like two hours later, like just sitting <laughs> right. there, like like a like a real teenager. I just can't because yeah. because I'm learning things. People are dancing. There's dogs. Yeah. There's Amazon hacks, you know. And that's probably what my kids don't want in their algorithm. They don't want the Amazon <laughs> exactly. hacks yeah. or the right. cute dog videos, which is what I like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was funny because I mean, when I started on TikTok, it wasn't like totally mainstream yet. So like I was, I was working like in the corporate world and like, I did, I, I truly didn't think anyone I knew in real life would ever see these things, you know, it was just yeah. you know, something I was trying, but then I started to go viral. And, like, you know, people at work are like, uh, you showed up in my feed the other day on TikTok. Like what's, what's going on with you? You're, <laughs> I was like, it's like, is that, that, uh, and some people like just heard about it who didn't use it. Like a lot of people just didn't use TikTok then. They're yeah, like, right. That, that kids dancing app you're on now? Like what's going on? <laughs> but, but then it's like, but I do, you know, just because you can see like as an active user, I could see that's where media, you know, usage was headed and that there was a magic to it. And so I'm like, I, I know these same people are going to be on TikTok in a, in a year or as it turns out, many of them just Instagram reels, which is very, very similar, you know. Um, so tell me about your a corporate job and are you still at this corporate job? 
Yeah, so I, I've worked for like 25 years in the corporate world um, <clears throat> in uh, marketing and corporate strategy. Um, and uh, I actually, I did leave that job last year. So I was, um, I was kind of getting to the point where I was like, somewhat close to retirement, not not quite there. And then this thing was sort of taken off. And I, um, uh, yeah, I just decided to kind of, I wanted to step back from the corporate thing. And <clears throat> it wasn't like to do this full time exactly, but but I knew there were some things I wanted to do related to this that I wouldn't have been able to do while um, working there. One of them was write a book. We can, we can talk about that. Yeah. Um, but, um, and, uh, you know, doing, I worked for a supermarket company. So like mm. some of the like sponsor, brand sponsorship, you know, partnerships that I might have wanted to explore. I couldn't really do because a potential conflict of interest or whatever. Right, so, okay. yeah. so yeah, I, I, I actually took the leap and left a little over a year ago and it's, and it's been amazing. I mean, it's, I'm really lucky to be able to, you know, do this kind of fun stuff and generate some income from it. And um, yeah, it's been, it's been great. That's amazing. Well, I mean, this is why I said, I think we're living parallel lives because mm. I'm in my 24th year of marriage. Our kids are the same age. Mm. My husband too has been at his exact same corporate job for 26 years for a big, <laughs> for a big energy company. Yeah. Um, the difference is, is that he doesn't have any social media at all. Not a bit. Mm. He did get an Instagram account because he said he was annoyed because we kept sending him things <laughs> Right. Yeah. and he would like try to open it and then he couldn't. So when I found out he had an Instagram account, this is one of those things that he had to apologize for because we were all mad that he had an Instagram account and didn't tell us. <laughs> But I mean, he doesn't have a photo. He has like, yeah, he yeah. follows zero people. He has, you know, he just, he just got it so he can watch when we send him like stuff from you. Yeah. Well, you that's know? good. That's good. And, <laughs> yeah. And he got, and he got mad at us about, we got mad at him. He got mad at us. We're like, then I got mad because I was like, who's this girl that's following you? He goes, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to open right, right. it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. I do hear that from a fair number of like wives who are like, oh, I send all your stuff to my husband or whatever. Because like most of my followers are women, but like there's a lot of sharing within the family or whatever that happens. Yeah. I, I will sit in bed and pull up my Instagram and I'll pull up yours and just sit there and just make my husband watch it. I go, look at this. <laughs> look at this. It's so funny. Look at this. Look at this. It's um, good. Now, I endorse that. Yeah, I did. I was like, this is so funny. Now, this is the one about the about apologizing to your wife. Watch this. Um, now, tell me what your kids think. So when you started mm -hmm. this, they were, sounds like your daughter was maybe 12 or 13 and now she's uh, 16. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, in general, they don't find me you know, quite as funny as the average stranger does, right? They're not that <laughs> impressed with me. But yeah, uh, yeah. for I mean, for a while, because it did start with a lot of my daughter's text messages. She claimed she was like responsible for eighty percent of my content or whatever. Oh. You know, she but, should get a cut. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah exactly. Um, but uh, yeah, she. Yeah, she. There's different. Yeah. Uh, terms she uses to refer to me you know, like the, the unemployed middle-aged tiktoker that kind of things so, mm -hmm. oh, they they they, they uh, help keep me in my place and uh but um uh but yeah they, i mean they, they they both like i said they both have a good sense of humor and the way that the account has developed uh, has kind of evolved is i don't actually share much of their stuff anymore because it's turned into this kind of like go-to place where people share their uh, yeah. funny text messages and they people are always messaging me stuff and it's amazing and so i mostly i'm sharing other people's stuff but, but that that is some feedback i get from my kids because they're like everybody thinks it's still all us and like like they um like there was one from somebody sent me around like i don't know it was like you know d delete that marching band post was like the text <laughs> from a kid and like my daughter was like so my friend the other day was like, I didn't even know you did marching band. And she's like, that's not me. Or whatever. So <laughs> there is a little, there is a certain percentage of people that think it's still like all my kids. And there's some comments that are like, man, I'm worried about your kids or whatever. But uh, you're like, God, so they text a, a lot. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, text exactly. a lot. How, could, how right. do you get your kids to text you so much? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I sent, I, I've sent you a few, you know, it's just with my son being at college or before, I mean, when he, before he was at college, it was, it was a lot of really not so bright you know, kind of yeah. dumb things, but now he's in college. It'll be, I sent you one the other day, which was, um, I wrote him, um, good morning. And then four hours later, he about bro, it's afternoon. <laughs> oh, right. I remember that actually. <laughs> but, but see, when I sent it to you, it was morning. Right. Yeah. But four yeah. hours later, bro, it was afternoon. You know? Right. Yeah. He does a lot of bro, bro. Last, <laughs> last night he sent me something. I just got, I'd just been in New York for a work trip. I'm so tired. My feet are killing me, like killing me. I think I need like a podiatrist killing me. <laughs> and I'm sitting on my couch, literally with my feet up, but I'm working because I'm always working at night because I'm watching shows. So I'm working mm. and he says that he got, he's on a, um, 
a trip to Nashville with some new college friends. So he wrote me and said, um, oh, we got to Nashville. Okay. We're going to Top Golf. Great. And then he wrote back, bro, can you do this for me? So I was like, okay. So I clicked it and it's a form that he needs to collect 10 people's names, addresses, and phone numbers for a fundraiser that his, um, his fraternity is doing. Mm. And so I go, oh, okay. So you don't feel like filling this out. So first of all, he doesn't know 10 people's phone numbers or addresses, or maybe even 10 <laughs> right. people that would donate money to him. But so it's like, um, Sure. So I quit what I was doing and I pulled up the thing to do it for him because I'm just like an enabler. I do whatever he says and I pull it up and then no lie, 45 minutes later, he writes back and goes, bro, is it done? Because it's due. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, obviously you've had it more than just this oh. today. Yeah. Probably weeks. Weeks. <laughs> right. right. There was one and I screenshot so many of these funny things that you have just so I could remember. And the one that was... Um, the medieval costume. Mom, oh, yeah. I need a rich medieval towns person's <laughs> outfit for the school play tomorrow. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. That's yeah. um, what's a covered bridge. I mean, I just can't. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, they, uh, they fall into like two categories generally. It's either kind of like the dumb questions, right. Or mm -hmm. the, or the instructions on how not to embarrass you, you know? So like the, the dumb questions are a lot of them, like you mentioned, filling this thing out, like a lot of them have to do with, when kids have to fill out forms for the first time, right? So yeah. there's a ton of boys who ask one of their parents, like, hey, I'm, I'm filling out this form. What's my maiden name? It's like, ah. It's I mean. It is so <laughs> funny. Right. Yeah. Um, I saw another one that said, what, it, do I have a surname? Um, <laughs> right, right, yeah. Um, the, my son, the first time I sent him to the doctor by himself, because he is over 18, I just could not go yeah. with him. He has sinus infection yeah. or something. I go, it's down the street. You're 18. That you can do it. It's, you've been there since you were literally born. You can do it. And the whole time he's just sending me questions, sending me uh, questions. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How long have I had the sinus infection? I'm like, <laughs> right, right, I don't right, know. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. One of my favorites is the girl, girl who's at the doctor's office. She's, she's filling out her name and address and where it asked for her street name. Uh, she put her nickname down, which is it's like, uh, it's, I don't think that's what they wanted, you know? <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Name. Yeah. <laughs> Like yeah. a street cred. Exactly. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. like it's Josephine, but I go by Jojo. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God. That's so funny. Yeah. So you guys know what time it is in my house. The time is always, Hey, what's for dinner? Hey, are we ordering dinner? Hey, are you making dinner? Mom, what are we doing for dinner? You guys, this is the dreaded question that comes up every day in my house, usually around 4 p.m. And ine inevitably, we will order takeout. It's easier, but it's never satisfying. It's never what we want. We always fight about what we want. And then it arrives, something is wrong. And then you feel kind of gross. because, like, why did we order takeout two nights in a row? And we spend way too much money. So if you'd rather enjoy a home-cooked meal without the stress of planning ahead, Home Chef makes it easy to save you money. You guys know I love my Home Chef. I get so excited when the box arrives. I get two to three meals a week, usually three meals a week that will feed us. And it's going to be something that I'm going to make myself. They give you the pre-portioned ingredients and then I make it myself and then I can make it to what I like, right? If somebody in the house likes a little more jalapenos, I'll put a little more on their section. Or if like me, I like no mushrooms, you can make it how you want it. The ingredients are there and it's up to you. And it's so easy with the cleanup because you haven't gotten out a bunch of extra stuff or you didn't have to go to the store to buy like four ingredients that you're only going to use once. It's economical. Home Chef customers save an average of $86 a month on groceries. You guys, they even have delicious kid-friendly family menu with 18 new options each week. I have used those before because I do have some picky eaters in my family, even though none of them are technically kids, but it's picky eater approved and it'll take the stress out of dinner time. So you guys, I'm highly recommending Home Chef to you guys. And for a limited time, Home Chef is offering my listeners 18 free meals plus free dessert for life. And of course, free shipping on your first box. You're going to go to Home Chef dot com slash pink shade that's home chef dot com slash pink shade for 18 free meals and free dessert for life you heard that right home chef dot com slash pink shade must be an active subscriber to receive free dessert this message is sponsored by green light 
A new school year is starting soon. And personally, I cannot believe that my kids are grown up and I don't have anybody to drop off at the first day of school anymore. It's so sad for me. But if you're a parent and you want to make this new school year an opportunity for your kids to learn important life skills and continue building independence, I'm recommending Greenlight. I've told you guys that I used Greenlight for my kids when they were in elementary and middle school. It was a complete game changer. Greenlight is a debit card and a money app for families where the kids can learn how to save, invest, and spend wisely, and the parents can keep an eye on their kids' new money habits. You got to keep an eye on it, guys. You don't know what they might do. You can also help kids get into their fall routine more easily than ever with the chores feature that lets you assign chores and automate the allowance. This is rewarding kids for getting things done around the house. This was the biggest thing for us. And also they had different chores in my house on the weekend during the week because during the week I wanted them to focus on their homework. So if you want even more out of Greenlight, you can upgrade to their Infinity Plan. Their Greenlight Infinity Plan includes the same access to financial literacy education that makes Greenlight a valuable resource for millions of parents and kids, plus built-in safety to give you peace of mind. The Greenlight Infinity, the teens can check in without actually needing to check in thanks to sharing the family location. They can also call for help if they need it with an SOS alert that connects them to family members, 911 or both. And there's even a feature that detects car crashes and will connect your young drivers to a 911 dispatch and alert emergency contacts if that is needed. Wow, that's a cool feature, guys. So no matter what features make the most sense for your house, Greenlight is an easy, convenient way for parents to raise financially smart kids and for families to navigate life together. So sign up for Greenlight today and get your first month free when you go to greenlight.com slash pink shade. That's greenlight.com slash pink shade to try Greenlight for free. Greenlight.com slash pink shade. All right. So can you remember the first like text from a teen, the first one that you did? Uh, I, well, I mean, it was, it was all my daughters and it was like, it was basically like, um, you know, uh, all like demands for food, like, you know, you know, whatever quesadilla, get on it or whatever, you know, just kind of like, <laughs> like, mo like mock rude kind of things, which, you know, and I, there, there was a bit of like, um, uh, you know, feedback in the comment section. It's like, oh, your kid's so rude or whatever, but it's like, you have to know the relationship, right? And it's all just like, we're just kidding back and forth in that kind of way. Yes, like my yes, daughter's like yes. the most polite person in the world, like out in, in real life. And so some people at first didn't get that. And, that, and honestly, that's probably partially why something like that goes viral because there's like some debate in the comment section. But yeah, um, uh -huh, right, right, right. But it, yeah, but it was a lot of like, yeah, I do spend a lot of time uh, cooking for, <laughs> for her. So a lot of like food related things or like, you know, just kind of like demands or whatever. Like uh, one of them was like, um, uh, she was like, I, her swim practice got out like five minutes early and I was like a minute late or whatever. And she's like, I, I'm literally standing outside, literally, literally arrive. <laughs> you know, it's like, just kind of like that kind of stuff, you know, bossing you around in kind of a quirky way. But uh, yeah. And then, um, and so I did those for a while. Then, like I said, it's, it's mostly kind of stuff that other people share with me. It's um, when I used to drive my um, son to middle school and my daughter too, but not um, quite as much. But my son, I would drive to middle school. You wait in the line, you wait in the line, mm -hmm. you wait in the line, and then you get up to the front and go, let me out. I'm like, well, <laughs> right. well, but we, I've now been sitting in the car for 10 minutes at seven o'clock in the morning. No, I'm not letting you out. I'm getting up to the door. Like, this is what we're yeah. working towards. I'm trying to get <laughs> to the door. And then right before the door, he's going to jump out, which by the way, then we'll get an email about parents. Mm -hmm. Don't let your kids jump out the parking lot. You know, then we'll get a mean email about it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Or when I would, you know, bring the dog to pick up, he'd say, bro, it's so embarrassing. Oh, so yeah, embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah, like the yeah. dog wanted to go for a ride in the car. The dog didn't do anything to you. Yeah, oh the whole uh, yeah, the pickup process is like rife with errors. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's like I've gotten so many texts that are like, you know, you know, park a block away, or you know, don't roll down your window when you pick me up, or make sure the music's off when I get in the car. That you know, that don't of, yeah, don't look at me. Right, don't wave to anybody. You know? Um, um, Leanne Morgan, the comedian, has mm. a very funny bit that she does about. Her kids are now all grown, you know, mm -hmm. married and kids and everything. But she has this bit that she did about her daughters would come out of the, uh, you know, the middle school, the high school, and they're waving to their friends and hey, and they're hugging and high fiving and got you, girl, and all this. <laughs> yeah. And then they would get in the car and be like, ah, do we have any cheese? And just start yelling at her in the car. She's like, right. I saw you being nice to everybody. 
Now, why did you get in the car and start yelling at me about what yeah. snacks I have for you in the car when we have a five minute ride to the house? You know, right, it's yeah. very fake. Cause I was like, that's what my kids would do. I could see they're like happy and they get in the car and like, yeah. school is the worst. I was like, look pretty fun to me. Right. Like right you were, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So, um, okay. So we have your categories. I want to talk about the categories you touched on that. So we have texts from your teens. Yeah. And then we have things you've apologized to your teenagers for. Mm -hmm. Now, one of them, tell me if this was a, a real one or if somebody sent this to you, that you jumped at a car horn, but it was Sweetie's <laughs> oh, beep, yeah. beep, it's my bestie in a Tessie. <laughs> yeah, no, that was real. That was me. That was weird. <laughs> I was like, my daughter to a swim beat and like, I, yeah, I, I, uh, I got startled by, yeah, by the sound of a car horn, but it was, uh, yeah, it turns out it was just that Sweetie song. It's like beep, beep, it's my bestie in a Tessie. Yeah. Tessie. So, um uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I did hear from a lot of people. They're like, oh, that's a, that sounds re really realistic. But my, my daughter explained it in like, you know, school terms. She's like, I should have been able to figure that out from the context clues, which, which is something they teach in school now. It's like, yes, because, uh, because of the lyrics or whatever. But, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm very easily startled. So that, that kind of stuff. <laughs> we, my, that's interesting because my kids say context clues to me all the time. Oh, interesting. Yeah. They're like, yeah. Use your context clues. Yeah. Like, right, right. It basically means you're an idiot if you can't connect the dots, so which I usually can't. But I'm like, I, I could say the same back to you. Use your context clues to understand how to load the dishwasher. Oh, yeah. Dishes exactly. that go in there because they're in yeah. the sink and they should. Right. So it's called a dishwasher. Um, my son has, is doing his own laundry at mm. college, which, the, listen, my kids are um, deficient in many household chores, but they do know how to do their own laundry. Mm. And my husband was like very adamant about teaching them how to do laundry because he said when he was like 12, his they had four kids and the mom was like, everybody do your own laundry. Mm. So he said he can remember like the pile of the ping pong table, like filled up with clothes and he'd go and just pull his pieces out and you know, not fold anybody else's. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so we, he's like, we got to teach him how to do laundry. And I was like, that's great for me. So he does know how to do laundry, but yet he's had a lot of questions about laundry at college. Cause I think mm. the machine looks different. Oh yeah. yeah. The buttons are different. Yeah. And also there's a swipe card situation where you have to, mm. and that's okay. yeah. been befuddling. Yeah, that that's one of the top. Like I, I've done like text from college freshmen like series, and like laundry is definitely one of the top areas. There's crazy questions. Like uh, <laughs> one of the first ones I did was, um, uh, "Hey, how do I get my clothes out of the washing machine? Do I just like reach in there with my hands?" <laughs> it's uh, yeah. There's a lot of kids that show up at the at the do it for the first time. So yeah. I saw one that the question was if I put my if I put my clothes in the wash at 9 a.m., will they oh, be dry by 3 p.m.? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I guess they think that one machine does both. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. And that it takes like eight hours or whatever. But, <laughs> yes. uh, yeah. Their terminology is weird, too. They'll call everything is like a sauce. They're like, you know, where, where do I put the sauces in, you know, in the, uh, oh, the laundry sauce. machine? Yes. Yeah, yeah, mm, yeah. The sauce. Yeah. yeah. So we have texts from your teens. We have things yeah. that you have apologized to your teens for. And then you have romantic texts from your wife and then mm. apology texts with your wife. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That the rom romantic text from my wife. I just did that very recently, but it's just, it's just a mix of like either like really mundane stuff, like, you know, send me the code or, or like, where are you? 20 or, times uh, a day is send me the code. <laughs> right. Send me right. the code. Did you get a code? Yeah. Send me the code. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, or just like quirky things from our house. Like, you know, you drop some turkey on the floor or, or uh, I bought that stupid peppermint ice cream you like, you know, that kind of stuff. Just, you know, I mean, you know, for the, the romance of marriage. So. One that I noticed in that series was notice how quiet my sneeze was. Yeah. Yeah. That's... Are you a yell sneezer like my husband? Do you yell when you sneeze? Yeah. It's not intentional, but it's. Uh, That's what yeah, he says, the... but I think it is. <laughs> no, it's the combination of the volume and the, uh, the, the number of consecutive sneezes like it's yeah no it's my daughter will like start counting out loud when i start sneezing it's it's not good i don't know what it is something genetic with uh, men typically he my husband sneezes and he yells at the same time but there's no reason for that there's <laughs> there's absolutely you can sneeze without screaming at the same time there's a whole um and I've, I've told my listeners this before if you haven't seen it right when we're done you have to look it up it's um Will Ferrell and Kristen Wiig on Saturday Night Live, and they're doing like a NyQuil commercial. Uh -huh. So she's walking around in a robe, like holding the NyQuil, 
saying in my family, when we get sick, you know, the thing, the only thing that helps us is, so she's doing this commercial and then behind her, Will Ferrell comes in with his hair all crazy. He's in a robe and his face is all runny and he's, ah! he's screaming in the background. And then she's trying to like go into other rooms to continue with the commercial, like talking about the NyQuil or whatever. And then he just keeps appearing in the background, yeah. sneezing, <laughs> screaming, sneezing. So I was like, yeah. this is when I realized maybe it's not just in my house. Maybe they did a whole Saturday Night Live skit about it. So it's got yeah. to be a man. It's got to be a man thing. That's good. Yeah. No, it's I mean, that's the thing. A lot of these apologies like <laughs> to my wife, I think it, the part of the reason it works is it's like it's kind of absurd from any angle. So it's because a lot of them are like involuntary reflexes. It's like oh, yeah. sneezing, breathing, chewing. That's like basic bodily functions. You have to do it, but it also drives your spouse crazy. So it's like there's a little bit of that series that's like, OK, who's the joke on really here? Is it like, <laughs> you know, the wife being you know ridiculous or is it the husband being super annoying? And it's, it's, a, it's some of both, I guess. He, my husband could write a same series about me because he, everybody in my family complains that when I'm in the car and I scream when we're about to hit another car, oh. um, that I shouldn't do that. That I, yeah. I was like, and I say the same thing. I cannot help my reaction when I'm in danger that I screamed out in fear, yeah. you know, and they'll say, well, we weren't going to hit the car, but so why'd you scream? Because that makes it worse. I'm like, I, I can't help it. Yeah. I was afraid we were coming up to a car at 60 yeah. miles an hour. I was afraid. Yeah. I'm sure your kids loved uh, learning how to drive with you in the car, probably. I tried my hardest not to do it very often. <laughs> yeah, same. Um, <laughs> because it's a lot of like hands on the dashboard, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Okay, let's talk about this. I want to know about your book. Oh, what yeah. Ti- yeah. What time is noon? First of all, yes. Was that from one of your children? What time is noon? No, no, but it's a it's a text or a quote I've gotten from probably 10 people that their kids are like, you know, hey, when you say noon, is that one o'clock or two o'clock? It's like, uh, all right, here we go. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so that's a yeah another uh, common uh, teenager question, disturbingly common. But uh, but yeah, the book is um, um, it comes out in November. It's available for pre-order right now. And it's uh, full of hundreds of uh, funny teenager text messages. It's got like stories from my family and a bunch of other features, like a bunch of like quizzes and uh, little charts and graphs and um, things like that. All right. Like and tell me what, yeah. what tell me about the quizzes, because I love a quiz and a survey oh. more than anybody. <laughs> yeah, good. It's kind of a combination of like. Like, you know, how, you know, how messy is your kid on a scale of one to 10 with a bunch of questions to kind of rank them or. Okay. Um, that's funny. Uh, yeah. And then also just like, you know, testing your knowledge about teenagers, like how they'll react in a certain, you know, when they're pumping gas and ask for their zip code, what will they do or whatever, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's, uh, it's good. I'm, it's just like a fun, light kind of read. It's a great gift, you know, for people for the, the holidays. Yeah, totally. So, yeah. I think it's a yeah. great gift because of many years, I say a few, I mean, a few years could be one or 12. I don't know. But a few years back, maybe 10, I gave my husband for Christmas that Jim Gaffigan book, Dad is oh. Fat. Oh, yeah. Great book. Great yeah. book. Because it's the same idea, right? His kid drew, they have like seven kids or something. And the kid drew the family yeah. and had to be like, this one's a ballerina. This one likes to read and had to write a description. And then it got to da- Dad is Fat. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. So yeah, it's the same harsh. idea. And that, that, and I gave my husband that book for Christmas because I was, it's hard to buy for guys because usually they mm. just buy what they want when they mm. want it. Yeah. So if you need to buy them like, oh, they would really like these certain socks or this tie or even like a watch or this cool new cup to drink. And they just buy it themselves. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. Gifts are, gifts are hard. You know, I, I'm always struggling to come up with the right gift. And I've had a bunch of people since I announced the book, they're like, oh my gosh, I'm getting this for all my, you know, I'm buying six copies for gifts this year for my family or friends or whatever. And it's like, it's just, I'm going to do yeah, it too. Just, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the way it came out. I think it's, I think it's, uh, yeah, I think it's pretty funny, but you know, so we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Um, I think that um, your family review of your books, like you were talking about, is <laughs> oh, yeah. hilarious. Your daughter calling you an unemployed middle-aged tiktoker yeah yeah it's nice yeah i've got it's sort of a mock review on the back cover it's like if you're looking for a book written by an unemployed middle-aged tiktoker you found it <laughs> oh i have okay now do you have any advice for parents that get these texts and I, literally i'd screenshot a bunch of some of my favorite ones um you know when dad wakes up can you tell him a tree fell on our house <laughs> Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have what do I put for my make of car? Metal. <laughs> right. Yeah. Metal. Yeah. Um <laughs> and then you know, the ones of please stop posting these pictures. It's weird. 
Um, oh, pictures of mushrooms. I think that one was. Pictures of mushrooms. And this was, <laughs> right. you didn't have to scream. I knew we were going off the road. Right. Yeah. And that, that could have been to you. Yeah. That was, see, that was because I was like, oh, yeah. that, that hit home. <laughs> but another one you posted recently that I did not put in my screenshots was I hit a pheasant, the bird, <laughs> not the person. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there was some confusion there. <laughs> I mean, if they hit a peasant, that would there'd be that'd be wrong for a lot of reasons. But yeah, it would be wrong for a lot of reasons, especially because we don't use that term anymore. No, would be the first no. would be the first one, and then let's see. Um, my husband, until this year, in the year of our Lord twenty twenty four, up to this year, my husband has had an Android. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So this one, don't tell anyone you have an Android. I'll never live it down. Um, <laughs> And then, of course, is work 40 hours a week or a month. Oh, yeah. God. Don't we wish it was a month? Yeah, everybody does. Yeah. The, the one very similar to that I just posted, I think it was yesterday, it was uh, our serving sizes per hour. <laughs> <laughs> we, all, we all wish that too. Yeah. You get one serving per hour. Yeah. Oh, uh, so do you have any advice for parents who get these mm. texts? And, and literally the answer is not, why are you, why are you stupid? Like why <laughs> I, have I taught you nothing? Are you stupid? You know, what, what's a, what's a better response? What's a better response for parents than are you stupid? Because sometimes I say that. Yeah. I mean, I, I actually don't think like a lot of people would call them, you know, stupid questions, dumb questions. I don't think they're dumb. I think it's just like, Hey, if you haven't, you know, been taught something, then you don't know it. Right. So like, there's a whole right. thing around stamps. Kids don't know like, Hey, does the post office sell stamps or whatever? Well, yeah. All right. right. You might've been able to put two and two together, but whatever you, you gotta, you know, context you clues, stuff, you Chip. Context clues. Yeah. Yeah. That right. would be, that would be a good yeah. response. But, yeah. um, so I don't think they're really stupid, but my, um, I mean, I guess my, two pieces of advice. One is just, you have to laugh, right? Cause you gotta, all this stuff is like, none of this stuff is serious or important. And so just right. my whole account is about just, you know, having fun smiling and laughing at the stuff we all have in common. Um, but the other thing is I don't, you know, especially as you think about your kids growing older and going to college, like, I don't think you should beat yourself up because maybe they don't know how to do laundry or send a letter or other kind of stuff. Cause that kind of practical stuff, they're going to figure out on their own. They're going to YouTube that or Google that. Like they'll like, I'm not sure my son ever did laundry before he left for college and he does it on his own. No problems. I've never seen a question from him about it or whatever. So it's like, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry. I mean, it's great if you want to teach your kids that stuff. That's awesome. But um, I don't think I would anybody focus, taught me how to do laundry or load a dishwasher. Yeah. Right. You, they're going to yeah. figure all that stuff out. It's, I would focus more on the important stuff. Like, you know, teaching them to be a good person and, you know, things that, you know, they, they can't get from, from YouTube or whatever. And, you know, I think the, I mean, maybe I'm oversimplifying it, but I think kids pay a lot more attention to what you do than what you say. And so I kind of think if you focus yourself on being a good person, then they're probably going to be good people too. And that's the kind of thing I would spend more time thinking about than, you know, how, you know, how to do laundry. So. That's a great point because like if you ever saw your kid being rude at a restaurant, then you should look inward because maybe you were rude hmm. at a restaurant. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Support for today's episode comes from Honey Love. Honey Love has revolutionized the wireless bra game. Their bras feature supportive bonding that eliminates the need for uncomfortable wires and unnecessary bulk. You deserve a bra that's lightweight and comfortable without sacrificing support. Embrace freedom, flexibility, and comfort with Honey Love's wire-free bras. Plus, they're made with a fabric that's so soft you will forget you're wearing it. For a limited time only, you can get Honey Love on sale. Get 20% off your entire order with our exclusive link, Honey Love dot com slash pink shade support our show and check them out at honeylove.com forward slash pink shade for a limited time you'll get honey love on sale 20 percent off your order honestly guys i am so sick of the bras that cause that bulging in the back you put it on it looks great from the front and you turn it around and you've got like spurts a back fat. It's just not cute. But Honey Love's bras are designed with a back smoothing fabric that prevents that bra bulge in the back. And did you know Honey Love has more than just bras? They have incredibly comfortable shapewear, tanks, and leggings for everyday support. Honey Love has you covered for the everyday look, workouts, weddings, and more. Honeys, you need this in your life. No more sacrificing. You've earned it. Honey Love is not just supporting women, it's empowering women. Treat yourself to the best bras on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com slash pink shade. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off 
honeylove.com slash pink shade, and you can find your perfect fit. After you purchase, they say, hey, where did you hear about us? Please support this show and tell them we sent you. Elevate your comfort, elevate your style with bras that empower your lifestyle of flexibility. Uh, you know, do you have any advice to parents whose um, kids are going into this stage where mm. they really did love you, want to hold your hand, and then suddenly now you're the most embarrassing thing on the earth? Yeah, I mean, I, I, the thing is, like, no, fa as you know from any age, like, no phase lasts forever, right? With kids, right? There's always whether it's good or bad, you know, it's not going to last, and so um, you just kind of you know roll with it. And you know, I think I think in the teen years, kids just there's a larger percent of the time that they're not super happy, you know, with you or whatever. Um, but it's not all the time. And um, I don't know, you just, it, it all just, as you know, it just it, in retrospect, it goes so fast that uh, I don't, you know, I, um, I, I don't know, I just try to roll with it and enjoy it and not get too uh, stressed. But I'm pretty low key, mellow person. So I, I get not everybody is like that. So. But I think, yeah. And I think also there's so many different dynamics it could be like a mother daughter that is rife with its own yeah yeah it can't yeah. be fine and then all of a sudden it's not right and you don't know what you did <laughs> to become such a monster you know right right well it's it is like i mean it's almost universal like my wife will like whatever something will happen between her and and our daughter and you know she'll be like complaining to me about it i'm like have you seen my content? Like, this is like so typical. Like everybody does this, like go watch the Layton show. It's like, you're, it's not unusual. Right? You're like, I have an Instagram account for you. Right. Right. Um, right. And then, you know, then you have the dynamics of like in, in, mothers and sons where we just sort of think the sons are so perfect and so cute and so great. Mm. And then they turn on you too. I mean, you know, <laughs> my son, even though he is six, one and 19 years old, you know, if nobody's around, he might come and like, get in my lap of which I'm like mm. five, four, it's not that great. But of course I'm just so happy that he's giving me any attention. I'm like a crazy person. And then you have, you know, fathers and sons. And at least in our house, it's a lot of like bonding over sports. And mm. if I come in the room, they like stop what they're talking about. I'm like, what were y'all talking about? <laughs> right. They're like, you don't need to know. It's a guy thing. Mm. Wow. You know? Yeah. And fathers and daughters too. And so all these relationships are so where dads will be way more protective over the daughters and with the sons will be like, ah, that's cool. You know, there's just so many dynamics there in families or there's a phenomenon I call boy mom, which is if you're a girly girl and you have all sons, mm. this is a yeah. stereotype of a woman who demands to be treated like a princess at, at all turns. <laughs> right, and her right, reasoning yeah. is i live in a house full of boys yeah yeah interesting yeah yeah well you, plus you will probably also pick up on things from reality tv right so the dynamics that you see that you see uh playing out in real life oh, around gosh. you or whatever but yeah well that's why i want to ask you too now what do you watch on tv and do your wife do you and your wife watch anything together uh, yeah, sometimes I, I was trying, I was thinking of like reality TV. I'm not really in your core, probably listener demographic. Like Dis disagree, <laughs> disagree. I think you are in my core well, demographic. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess behavioral demographic or whatever. I don't watch a lot of the probably core uh, reality shows you, you preview it. We, more in terms of reality. Like it's more kind of like, uh, we'll watch survivor usually. And yeah, like, good. We'll be yeah. in and out of bachelor or bachelorette, depending on the season or whatever. And, um, golden bachelor that, that those are our people. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, I watch a fair bit of sports and just like local news and kind of stuff. Like my wife and I will watch stuff together, but it's like, um, uh, it's all it, like we're never like sometimes it's just not available at the same time, and you can't yeah. like, get ahead of her or no. you can't get ahead of you. <laughs> the right. whole thing if someone's traveling, so it's we usually end up watching sometimes it's it, them separately or whatever. We I'm trying to think what's the last thing we watch. We watch the. Uh, the house of the dragon like together recently which oh, just ended so yeah, you know, yeah, that, yeah. Kind of, that kind your of game of thrones people your yeah yeah exactly game. yeah yeah so we want my husband and i never watch it because usually i'm tr having to watch something for work but sometimes i will see something and i'll be like i know you're gonna like it and then he doesn't believe that he will like it i'm like this is what i do for my job i promise so i made him watch the bear oh um, yeah i just i just uh, watched that actually with my daughter actually yeah. see i made i made him watch the bear. And then he sees now that I do know what I'm, I wouldn't steer him. I'm not going to steer him into real housewives of Beverly Hills. That's not going to be his jam. Yeah. Cause he too would only like to watch yeah. college football 24 seven. Yeah. One of the, uh, one of the quotes in that, uh, romantic text from my wife was, mm. uh, was, uh, I forget if she was talking about a TV show or a book, but she was like, 
yeah, it's really boring. You'd probably like it. <laughs> I was like, I'm not sure how to take that. I, I do watch some boring stuff. I did once watch a two and a half hour documentary about salt. So, you know, it's, it's probably a fair. Ooh, fair okay. Comment. Well, that's, <laughs> that's a bridge too far. I, my, our best yeah. friends live down the street and he loves any kind of war and history podcast mm. or documentary. Mm. So I'll tell every so often I'll come across something that to me is interesting because it's got maybe a little bit of scandal, but it has a little history because I really just famously hate anything involving history, even though I do have a minor in history. I just don't give me a romantic novel set in World War II. Not interested. Yeah. I yeah. don't want to hear about the Nazis. I don't want to read about, I don't care. I care, but I don't care to read it in my in my adventure novel or whatever. Mm, yeah. People are always sending me these books. You'd love this book. I go, nope, I see it set in 1912. Not going to read it. <laughs> right. But he's always wanting to watch these things. And his wife is like, yeah, you know, sometimes it's about like Churchill or something. It's interesting. I go, we, no, we can't be friends anymore. We can't <laughs> be friends anymore. Uh, you lost me. You lost yeah, me. Yeah, that's funny. He also loves Bruce Springsteen uh, like a crazy person. Hmm. And I'm like, well, I guess I feel that way about like the Grateful Dead or Billie Eilish. So we could talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not not Bruce in particular, but yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. I think my wife and I have pretty different tastes in music, but uh, whatever. You don't you don't have to be interested in the same things or whatever. No, <laughs> it's better. Yeah, 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 right, right. I forget what she was we were talking about, but she it was like uh something, but she was like, Well, we don't have the same interests, so you know, whatever. <laughs> Sometimes that makes things work out really well. But I don't know. <laughs> My husband will tell people what I do. He's a he's a lobbyist here in DC, and like I said, mm. he's been with the same company for twenty six years. Or, yeah. yeah, and so we're very different in that way. Like I said, he's never had. And he did tell me the other day. You know, I've got like sixty friends on LinkedIn. <laughs> Is that a thing? Do you have friends on LinkedIn? He goes, Yeah, uh, people yeah. follow me there. Wow. <laughs> um, but. Now I completely forgot what I was saying about having different interests. Oh, he tries to explain to people my job. He'll say, oh, my wife is a podcaster. And then when people usually say, oh, that's like cute or fun, or do you make any money or is that a real job? And yeah. I imagine you get that as well. Like, oh, that's, is that a real job? I'm like, actually, yeah, it's a real job. It's a real <laughs> yeah, job. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, when I go to these things with him, all the people are these like DC types. So they look at me like, they look at me like I have only fans, basically. They're like, oh, right, right, she yeah, must yeah. be like a stripper. I mean, you know, just like. <laughs> right, right. Just, yeah, yeah. It's not the same thing. It's not the yeah. same thing. Yeah, there's a variety of podcasts out there. <laughs> right. When you um, when you go around in, in there in Portland, Maine, if you go to the grocery store or anything, do people that don't know you in your real life, do people come up to you and they recognize you or they want to tell you their life stories? Uh, sometimes, yeah. I mean, like I said, people, I, I, most of the time people don't come up. I can tell when someone like recognizes me and, and most of the time they won't, just won't like say anything, but you can tell when someone's like looking at you for a few seconds or whatever. And, and, um, uh, but it's great where they do it. I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's fun. It happens a lot when I travel actually, um, I found, and, uh, it's always, uh, it's always interesting if like I have some part of the family there with me or whatever. <laughs> Or just like, yeah, you're like, look, me. I'm legit. <laughs> right. Like, so it'll be like, oh my gosh, you're so funny. Like, they'll say to like my wife, like, oh, it must be so funny around the house. And she's like, yeah, yeah, we're rolling around the aisles here. It's, uh, it's really great. He's <laughs> it's, it's not that yeah. interesting around the house. I love to send him a text and then see it appear on his millions of followers on TikTok. That's <laughs> right. great. That's right. great. Right. Yeah. yeah. When you said the, when the romantic test sent me the code, I was dying because I was like, because some of our accounts are tied to my husband's phone number. Yeah. Yeah. And it drives me nuts. Or if I call and I'll say, Hey, I need to find out the status of this like medical claim, or whatever. And they'll go, yeah, I'm going to need to talk to your spouse. I'm like, believe me, he doesn't know. <laughs> right, I know it's right. in his name, but he has no idea what I'm calling you about. Yeah. Exactly. He doesn't know this account even exists. He's not, <laughs> he's not. Um, all right. So everybody, I think everybody that's listening will already know, but tell everybody where they can find you and how to pre-order your book and all that. Sure. Yeah. So it's uh, The Layton Show, L-E-I-G-H-T-O-N. So you can find me on TikTok, Instagram, uh, or uh, Facebook. And uh, I also have a website, uh, thelaytonshow.com. And uh, any of those places have linked links to the book it's uh called what time is noon it's on you know amazon and barnes and Noble amazon or, okay yeah. so mm -hmm. um should be pretty easy to find but yeah you can order order it today and uh ships in well when, when we're recording this less than two months but even less by the time you're probably airing it so um uh yeah no i uh i uh yeah i enjoyed talking to you and uh yeah i hope uh, people will check me out if they uh if they haven't seen me already 
And do, uh, has the pre-order sales been going good? Yeah, think? yeah. Actually, I just heard from the publisher the other day. It's just, it's it's gone great so far. So, and I've heard of, from a ton of people who were like, "Yeah, pre-ordered. Got a bunch of get you know for gifts and for stuff." For gifts, so yeah. Been, yeah, it's been a great. Uh, and I get any day now. I actually get the physical copy myself. Uh, so I'm excited to see that. Oh, so you don't even have it yet? No, no. I have like kind of like a mock-up or whatever, but like the real ones. Um, I'll get I'll get a sample pretty soon. Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. Well, I'm yeah. really, really excited for you. I think that your Thank you. success is well-deserved, but I think you really kind of hit on something that people hadn't hit on that's just so relatable and so funny. Whenever I see it pop up, I have to stop and read it, and then I got to share it with everybody. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you. Yeah. It's it's pebbling. You've learned something new. <laughs> I know. I got to put that in my next teen language glossary. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, don't hang up, but thank you very much. And everybody, awesome. if you are um, watching because you know Chip and you don't know me, I'm Mary Payne. I have a podcast, Pink Shade Pod, mostly cover reality TV, but you can follow me on Instagram at Pink Shade Pod. Please get my numbers as high as chips. Just kidding. It'll never happen. Okay. Bye. <laughs>